We're going to be discussing the different types of angles and some lines. This is Lesson 24A, and I've got links of some middle school videos in the description that can help you. When we see a long line with an arrow on each side, that's an actual line. It's like a number line. When you see it with a point and then an arrow, that's a ray. And when you have two rays, we have one here and one here, the space between them is an angle. And angles are labeled with capital letters. Here's angle A, B, C. And the vertex is the point right here where the two rays meet. So that would be the vertex for that angle B. When you see this little shape like this, it sort of looks like a less than, except it's laying flat on the line, okay? Less than slopes and slopes, like that. This is more like this, where it's laying flat on the bottom, okay? When you see that, this means angle ABC. We can look at this geometric notation and see that it's an angle and that the vertex is point B because that's in the center. We label them, the vertex goes in the center. See? It would be B. When you see a little M, that means measure. So this means the measure of angle ABC. So there's different types of angles. There's acute angles and they're less than 90 degrees. And the way I remember them I remember them is, out of all the angles, they're the cute little ones, so they're acute. A right angle is going to have a little box inside of it. It's like the edge of a square or a box, isn't it? That's a right angle. It can face any direction as long as that little box is in there, it's 90 degrees. An obtuse angle is more than 90 degrees but less than 180. So the way I remember this is OB is like obese, so that's the obese angle, that's the fat angle. Okay, the cute one is the little cute one that's less than 90, and it could be 89.999 centimeters and still be acute because that's less than 90. Okay, a straight angle means it measures 180 degrees, so a straight line is a 180 degree angle. Isn't that a mind blower? Then we have angles that got so big that they went past the straight one and kept going. They're called reflex angles. They're more than 180 degrees, but they're less than 360 degrees, all right? So we can call this angle ABC because the B is at the vertex. It's angle ABC. We can also call it angle B and just call it by its vertex. We can also call it angle 1 because there's a little 1 there. And we can draw and measure angles with a protractor, and it looks like this. And the clear ones are the best to get, and they don't cost very much money. They're usually just a dollar or two. Now, I want you to look very closely here. You're going to see a vertex hole right there, and you'll be able to put a pencil there or line up the vertex with it, and you can then draw an angle. If you want to draw an angle that's opening to the left, you use the outside measures along here. If you want to draw an angle that's opening to the right, you use the inside measures. See that? For the outside measures of a left-facing angle, that would be 0 degrees. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 15, 20. See that? So that would be for an angle opening like this one to the left. For an angle opening to the right like this one, this line is 0 degrees. See? And then that's 10, 15, 20. 25, 30. See? So it's facing that way. We use the inside measures. When it's facing to the left, we use the outside measures. Okay? So take a look at this. This will explain it a little bit better. Here we have one opening to the right, and we're using the inside measure to see that this is a 45 degree angle. See, here's 40, there's 50, so 45 is in the middle. If we flip it around and have it facing opening to the left, we have to use the outside measures. Here's 40, here's 45, here's 50. See that? So depending on which direction your angle is facing, you're going to use the inside measures or the outside measures. This one is 120 degrees. And we use the inside measure because it's opening this direction. See? If it's opening this direction, we use the outside measures. There's 120. See? 
And when it's a 90 degree angle, it's going to be going straight up and it'll have that little box. That little box tells us it's a right angle, it's 90 degrees. All right. Now there's also complementary and supplementary angles. Complementary angles, when you add them together, they're going to total 90 degrees. And supplementary angles, when you add them together, they'll total 180 degrees. And when two angle measures are added and we get a sum of 90 degrees, they are complementary angles. And they don't have to share a ray. See how these, this angle and this angle shares that ray, like two neighbors sharing a wall? They don't have to be like that to be complementary. They just need to total 90 degrees. So these two angles aren't touching each other, but they're complementary because 45 and 45 makes 90. See? When the sum of two angle measures equal 180 degrees, they're supplementary angles. So 60 and 120 equals 180, so these are supplementary angles. 115 plus 65 equals 180, so they're supplementary angles. See? And they don't need to share the ray to be supplementary. They just need to total 180 degrees. So complementary is 90 degrees. Supplementary is 180 degrees. So which two angles here are complementary? We have angle A, angle B, and angle C. Which of these two would be considered complementary? It would be B and C. 66 plus 24 equals 90. See? Knowing complementary angles are equal 90 degrees and supplementary angles equal 180 degrees and knowing that that little box means it's a right angle, it's 90 degrees and knowing that a straight line is 180 degrees we can find missing angle measures. We look at this, this is angle A, X, C and it's a right angle, isn't it? We see the box there and it's telling us that angle B, X, C is 25 degrees but it doesn't know what angle A, X, B is. See? And we can find it because we know the whole thing must equal 90. Now, I know you could quickly go in your head, oh, 90 take away 25, it's going to be 65, and just do a quick little su subtraction problem. But I'm trying to get you familiar with these equations. So they would write the measure of angle AXB, the measure of angle AXB, plus the measure of angle BXC, BXC, should equal 90 degrees. See? because that's a right angle here and we know they're 90 degrees. So using what we've learned from algebra, we can make zero pairs. If this is 25 degrees, we put the 25 degrees in place of this measure of angle BXC and we can add a negative 25 degrees to each side of the equation that creates a zero pair here and it gets eliminated and now we know the measure of angle AXB is equal to 65 degrees. See? Let's try it again. Now we know this is a straight line. We know that's 110 degrees, so I know you could probably do a quick subtraction problem and tell me what that one is, but I'm trying to get you familiar with these equations. The measure of angle AXB, AXB, so that means inside of here with the question mark, plus the measure of angle BXC equals 180 degrees, because they're supplementary, aren't they? We can take this BXC, notation out and put the 110 there, we can add a negative 110 to each side of the equation to eliminate this and what we're left with is the measure of angle AXB is 70 degrees. See? So you might have something similar to this in the test and it might be a little bit more difficult but you'll understand the basic way to solve it. Okay? Now take a look at this. We have lots of rays here and this is a straight line, and look, there's a little box, so we know that's a 90 degree angle. And it's got a question mark here and a question mark here. The only measure it's giving us is BXC is 25 degrees. But we could find both of these measures. First of all, if BXD is 90 degrees, then BXA needs to be 90 degrees. If that's 90 degrees and this is a straight line, then that's 90 degrees, right? Because 90 plus 90 makes 180. And if this is 25 degrees and this whole thing is 90, we can do the same thing we did up here. And we can put the 25 degrees in place of the BXC. We can subtract it from each side of the equation, or we can say we're adding a negative, can't we? 
Either way, it's the same thing. It's going to eliminate this as a zero pair, and we're left with the measure of angle CXD is 65 degrees. So we found that is 90 and that is 65. Okay. So there's all different types of protractors. Here's a regular protractor, and that's what we've been using. And if you don't have one, you should get one so you can play around with it. They also have full circle protractors. That would be great for making those big reflex angles that go past a straight line, wouldn't it? And I know art stores have a thing called a swing arm protractor. This arm actually moves to help you draw your angles. And then there's a compass. And this is my compass right here. And it actually has a little hole there. See that hole that you can put a pencil through? And it snaps in place. And I put a marker on there so I could use it on my dry erase board. And it actually, I don't know if you can see, but it actually has measures there. See that on the curve? Centimeters. And then on this side, can you see that? That's in inches. So you use this sharp point. You put it on the paper and you can make arcs. You can make circles. Okay. So we're not really using these that much right now. We're worrying about the protractors, okay? The measure of angle A is 35 degrees. The measure of angle B is 145 degrees. Which of the following is true? So we have these five choices. Is angle A an obtuse angle? Well, it's 35 degrees, and remember the obtuse was like the obese one? 35 degrees isn't very big, so no, it's not obtuse. Number two says angle A and angle B are obtuse. Well, we know angle A isn't. We just figured that out. So that can't be true because even if that one is, that one isn't. Number three says angle A is complementary to B. Well, remember, complementary angles equal 90 degrees and supplementary equal 180. Is 35 plus 145 90 degrees complementary? No. Are angle A and angle B supplementary angles? There you go. If we add the measure of angle A and the measure of angle B, we're going to get 180 degrees. So number four is correct. They total 180, so they're supplementary. See, our last choice was that they were both acute, and we know 145 degree angle is not acute, is it? This one says, if the measure of angle one is 16 degrees, right inside of here, what is the measure of angle two right here? Well, look, we have a box. We have a straight line here, and we've got that right angle 90 degree box here. So we know that this angle is 90 degrees. That means the other side here, angles 1 plus 2, have to total 90 degrees. All we have to do is take the 16 from the 90 to find out that angle 2 is 74 degrees. See? Now look at this one. It says angle ABC is a reflex angle. It's open so big it wrapped around. So what is its measure in degrees? What is the measure of angle ABC? Well, if we extend this line here, BC, then this part of the angle would be 180, wouldn't it? And if that's 90, that's 90. So that means we have 180 plus 90. That would be 270 degrees. See how I extended the line to help myself? We can also look at it as a full circle is 360 degrees. And if that's 90, we take that away and we still get 270. All right? So a lot of times in geometry, you can extend a line to help yourself. Okay? You should now be ready to do the skill focus on page 287. And our next lesson is going to be about congruent and vertical angles. Remember, congruent means they're equivalent, that they're the same. And there's the links to the middle school videos that are going to help you about lines and angles. And we don't have any previous GED lessons for 24 yet. This is the first one. So I'm not going to have any of those in there. But those middle school ones should help you, all right? Then pretty soon coming up, we'll even have some eighth grade ones once we get into adjacent angles and stuff, okay? So keep going. I'm proud of you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.